So who exactly are the Goa'uld? You'll find out right after this. Hey everybody, I am Taylor and I'm the Stargate Guy, where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Today's another good racial profiling, and we're talking about the Goa'uld. These Gould, Goa'uld. 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 Never mind. The bad guys. You said they got snakes in their heads? Symbiotes, yes. And what about the fellas with the ones in their bellies? They're different. They're called Jaffa. They incubate the symbiotes until they're ready for implantation. Now, you see, Joe, that's confusing. He's right, boss. I mean, well, why can't there be just one kind of bad guy? You know, snake goes in the head, makes him evil, the end. Call them the snake people. Yeah, the snake people's good. Yeah. They're not called the snake people. They're called the Goa'uld. The Goa'uld are a parasitic race that first developed on P3X888, where it coexisted with a species named Unas. Now, coexisting is kind of a... A generous term, but they lived on the same planet. The Guawood are snake-like parasitic creatures that inhabit a host. A host can be a bunch of different types of creatures, however, most notably the Unas and humans. The Guawood enters the host through the neck area, either the back of the neck, the front, or through the mouth. Once the Goa'uld is in a host, it wraps itself around the spinal cord and sends fibrous tissues into the central nervous system as well as to in the brain, which allows it to have almost complete control of the host. The human host is aware about what is going on, but is unable to do anything about it. Now, Goa'uld are not necessarily evil in nature. However, most Goa'uld do tend to be rather... Uh, maniacal and just plain evil. They love ego, they love power, and they love controlling things. And therefore, Gould will go to any length to assure that they are very powerful and that they dominate, eventually rising to the rank of controlling all sorts of different planetary systems and trying to control the entire galaxy if it can. Although this is very common amongst the Gould as a species, there is a subset of Gould who biologically are extremely similar to the rest, but they take on a very different viewpoint on their uh, parasitic nature, wanting to move from a parasite into a more symbiotic relationship. These are known as Tok'ra, Tok'ra being against Ra, Ra being a dominant Gua'uld evil bad guy person. The Tok'ra would rather have a symbiotic relationship. They have, uh, they find hosts that are willing and in exchange for the use of their body, uh, the host gets all sorts of knowledge from the Gua'uld. It also gets the healing ability of the Gua'uld and the longer lifespan. And in return, the Gua'uld, or rather Tok'ra, gets to have access to the body and is able to live its own life in conjunction with the host, mingling together of minds and beliefs and uh, really becoming symbiotic one with another. The Gua'uld do possess a genetic memory. That is a memory that is inherited from one generation to the next, passing it along. It would be like you having all of the knowledge of all of your ancestors going back like forever. Therefore, the Gua'uld, who are rather parasitical in nature, who are rather evil in nature, the more babies that they have, the more evil Gua'uld parasitic the people that there are. However, if the Tok'ra, on example, have produced more offspring, then there will be more uh, Gua'uld with more symbiotic natures rather than parasitic natures. Gua'uld do spawn by use of queens, kind of similar to a queen ant or a queen bee. That is, a queen is capable of spawning thousands of offspring. These offspring in their junior form does not provide much of a threat. Although it is capable of inhabiting a host, it cannot assert that much control over the host. This offspring can uh, assert itself to provide the host with periods of blackouts or take it over while it is asleep. But the host can live a almost normal life outside of that. Now, when the Gould symbiote matures, it can assert more control over its human host and eventually control 
its entirety. Now, in order for the Guo Wu symbiote to be compatible with a host species, a queen must have a DNA sampler from the species in question. Now, in the relation with Hathor, Hathor was trying to spawn her own symbiote again and use genetic material from Daniel Jackson in order to help ensure that the symbiotes are more compatible with the human species. Now, if a queen wanted her symbiote to inhabit another species, such as a Unas, likewise, it would also need to get a genetic sampler from the host in order to make sure that those symbiotes are compatible with the species. However, there are still times of rejection. In order to prevent further rejection, Jaffa were created. Jaffa were created from humans and had their DNA altered in order to be incubators for the Guawood symbiotes. Now, when a Guawood symbiote is young, it can be implanted within a Jaffa who has a pouch in their belly in order to help the symbiote to mature. While the symbiote is in the Jaffa, it substitutes as its immune system and it gives it additional strength and stamina throughout its life. But the Jaffa immune system becomes reliant upon that Goa'uld, so that if you take the snake out, the Jaffa would just plain die. Now, in this environment, the Goa'uld is able to mature and fully become more compatible with the human species or with the species in question. Theoretically, there would also be Unas Jaffa that would serve a similar purpose at one point in time. However, we don't actually see any of those on the show. The symbiote then takes a human host and uses that human host for several hundred years unless they have access to a sarcophagus. That allows them to extend their life to thousands of years long. Now this is very difficult for the Tok'ra. Since they do not use the sarcophagus, they are reliant upon changing hosts every couple of hundred years. Now this is very difficult because not a lot of people willingly want to be hosts to a Guowu symbiote, even one that has the moralness and the actual symbolic relationship of the Tok'ra as opposed to the Guawuld. Since the Guawuld are 99% of the total population, it is very easy to understand and be skeptical of the possible host that this would actually be a symbiotic relationship. Therefore, the Tok'ra population slowly dwindles over time coming to eventually a tiny, tiny, tiny little drop in the bucket as far as total population of the Guawood species. Now, the Guawood developed on the planet P3X888, along with another species called an Unas. An Unas is a bipedal species that is naturally strong, and it looks somewhat reptilian in nature. Now, the Guawood were able to inhabit the species of Unas before they came to the species human, which is a lot easier Year for the Gulwood symbiote or parasite really to fix in case the body is damaged. Now the symbiote can aid in the healing process, but that does not mean that its host is completely impenetrable to all diseases and or injuries. A Guawood can die within its host if the host receives enough damage and the parasite in it within it, the Guawood, is not strong enough to leave the host and immediately find another host. A Guawood outside of the proper waters in which it was originally from, or in a symbiote pouch, or in a host has a very limited lifespan just out on dry ground. Overall, the Guawood are nasty parasites that love taking over people and love ruling the universe, and eventually get more and more corrupted by use of the sarcophagus and its neural effects on them and their host, making that more maniacal, more evil-like nature to come out even more and to be more dominating and more controlling and more just downright evil. So let me know what you think about the gold if I missed something in the comment section down below. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Great videos are coming out every week where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. You can click right here for another racial profiling or right here for another awesome Stargate video. Thanks to everyone who bought me a cup of coffee. You guys are awesome and you keep this channel going. And until next time, I'll see you on the other side.